All right, uh, my name's Ian. I'm a bio major and I'm a sophomore here at uh, UNC at Chapel Hill. And we're on campus and I'm here to talk about uh, the mental health crisis going on this semester and this year and what has happened. And that through my experience and my, well, for me personally and myself and my roommate and all my countless friends that have dealt with mental health problems on campus, it's really, I think the root of the problem here is that that UNC is really just not active and really caring about each student. And when people, and it's so, they make it so easy for us to feel like a failure in our classes and our rigorous like curriculum that makes you feel like, I mean, it's just, that makes you feel like it's just hopeless. And the, the, um, the outreaches that we have on campus available to us and the resources through uh, CAPS, our counseling and psychological services. And um, well, we also have a med center for, you know, more in-depth psychological services that they're super underfunded. And if you can't really get like your stuff sorted out quickly in a couple days or sessions that they pretty much just tell you to, to leave or find something else. And for a lot of students on campus, especially for me, I mean, I can't afford to go get a, you know, a, a therapist myself. And all the roots of my problems are because of this campus and the way they treat us. And so I don't really feel like I have anywhere to go. And I dealt like, and the same goes with my roommate and here on campus and especially with us, um, with STEM majors, they really, they really overwork us a lot and they don't really give us time to process things or deal with our stress and our management. And that's really, really the root of the problem because since all of these suicides have happened this semester, they had pretty much sent out an email saying that, um, sorry, this happened and we'll give you the day off on university day when we'd already get in a break anyways. And that really won't solve the problem at all. A day off really won't help the people that I know and the people around campus that are going through stuff and feel like they have nothing else to do because one day off of class isn't going to change the fact that you know either we're depressed or overworked or stressed and there's no outreach and there's no help because everybody's going through something and to the degree of committing suicide and people feel like they have nowhere to go and that's really because the neglect we feel from the UNC admin and me personally, like I have taken, I took last semester off and I had taken five classes and I had passed all of them and I had failed one of them. And they make me, I feel like I'm stuck in the cycle of not being able to succeed. And they sent out an email that like, no matter what, you're not a failure, you're here, you're going to class, but they make it so easy to feel like we're, we are failures and we have nowhere to go. And it's really just because the admin hasn't really stepped up to the crisis that's happening on the campus. And one day off for mental wellness isn't gonna change the fact that this will keep happening. And that, I mean, that's not gonna change anything that we have going through the rest of the year and the academic progress. In your opinion, um, do you think, I know they have not released the reasons why these Two students did take their life or their own life uh, this was over the last weekend right uh, you, you, two weekends ago okay and your opinion and again it's I'm sorry Ian Ian um, do you think what you just listed could have contributed to their a hundred percent a hundred percent and and it's five students that have taken their life now on some uh, the semester since this semester uh, yep Wow uh, I have five people that. have died and yeah it wasn't just those two last uh, Last weekend, there was three previous, um, one in the Forest Amphitheater about where my dorm is in North Campus. And I feel that like, it's, it has to deal partly with the academics for sure, but also I feel like it is easy to feel alone in your academic journey here. And I feel like that definitely puts a toll on people because they get stuck in this rut where they feel alone, they have nowhere to go. And that's what really I feel like is one of the main roots of the cause for these people taking their lives.
And again, are you speaking for yourself, Ian? Are you have you spoke to other students who feel this well, like yeah. you? Yeah, I've I've spoken to other people, and I've dealt because I'm a part of a like a men's mental health outreach group oh, on what's campus. What's the name of that? It's called Mentality. Oh, okay. And um, it's really about bringing outreach to men's mental health because there's such an overlook on um, men's mental health and as opposed to women's. Yeah, because there's this there's this stigma that you know men shouldn't show their emotion and okay. they don't have feelings when in actuality you know 75% of all suicides are men and wow I didn't know um, that. yeah okay. and and I think that because of the stigma and because of this academic struggle and stress and um, feeling alone in this in this giant campus where there's there's you feel like you see so many people but you can't really connect to them because I mean, I'm, I'm a man. I feel like I can't really communicate my thoughts and feelings to, you know, strangers okay. <laughs> and friends. Well, I appreciate you sharing them with me. I'm a total stranger. Oh, of course, of I, we course. We just met, so I was well, passing by. I, I know, I just want to, you know, shed light on, just to t let people know that, I mean, they're not alone. And cool. we're all going through something, and I don't, I don't want to lose anyone else. I can't. And that's why I try to help people all the time. And Ever since I had posted stuff about this enjoying mentality, people have hit me up, and I—I I mean, I don't want to go into other people's problems, but I—I I mean, I've saved other people's lives because they could have taken their own lives if I wasn't there to talk to them. Wow. And help them. Yeah. And if you had to take a stab, just a guess, how many people on campus? This again, this is your opinion. Do you think are going through what you're going through and feeling the same as you do how, if I know how many in your men's group and then extrapolate um, from that how many on campus would you I would say just your guess on campus I would probably say like 45% of the students I've met are, are not are going through something in the stress and feeling alone not to the degree that they'll take their own lives but how about to the degree that they're considering taking on would you say if you I would probably say at, at least 10% of the people I know and that's 10 percent of a population of over 20,000. Yeah, 100 percent. And you feel pretty confident in stating that. That's, yeah, that's about 2,000 students roughly. Yeah. Wow. Because I, the people I've talked to on campus, and the 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 people I've talked to on campus, they it breaks my heart to see that they feel lost and they feel like failures because, like they just feel like they have nowhere to go and there's no one there to help them and i wish i could have been there for all those like kids that taken their lives because they had done so much to get in, into the school and for them to go through this journey of tr you know working their ass off essentially to get into this college and then f really feel like they have nowhere to go and feel lost because the lack of um personal ability and like personal outreach and like help from the administration is it's just not there and it it just breaks my heart to see that that people will take their own lives because they because of UNC wow and their workload and you think this is all majors or just uh, are there certain majors there where it hits it more? I wouldn't I I wouldn't have enough information to speak on that but I definitely believe it definitely stems from STEM majors you know science technology engineering and mathematics those because, are the most at stress. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, we kind of have this saying around campus, like if you're a neuroscience major or something like that, you don't like sleep because you're working constantly all the time. And me personally having to deal with the chemistry department in specific, they really just kind of hammer work into your face and don't really give you any wiggle room. I mean, all of the teachers after since these events have happened and these people have taken their lives, all departments that I've um, have classes and have sent out emails like listen if you're going through anything we're willing to work with you with you know extensions of due dates and stuff like that but the chem department had sent out an email that was like um, I'm sorry take this day off for wellness but they hadn't really moved my uh, chemistry test and they gave an option to move it until Monday and no homework assignments have any extensions or any partial credit for past the due date Wow. and so when you feel overwhelmed and stressed out it's very hard to you know, focus and work on your work in a timely manner, sure. especially before a due date. Sure. And um, they're not very flexible. And if it was up to you, Ian, um, excuse the plane there. Um, the plane, right? <laughs> um, 
what would you do, in your opinion, to solve this problem and and prevent people from even considering? What do you think needs to be done for people not only to not take their own life, but not even consider taking them? What, what, in your opinion, what do you think it would take so none of this would be an issue and people could live happily, carefree, no stress, no even thought about considering this at all. They would just be happy students and enjoy their life as a student. What is I, it going to take? I think I could bring this, break this down into three things. Sure. Um, I think first, um, additional resources and funding to CAPS and all mental uh, wellness programs on campus and resources that are supposed to be provided by the university um, and ease of access to it. Accessibility is a very good, like, is a very good measure of how you can be helped because a lot of, it is such a big step to ask for help when you feel alone and you feel stressed out and overwhelmed. And that step should not be as big as it should be for most people. It should be very easy to talk to people and go, like, to sit down and go through what needs to be done to help you. And I think second, uh, a reworking of a lot of the curriculums of classes because most classes I've taken that have gone back in person are pretty much learn the curriculum outside of class through your homework and the textbook that's all, all online, go into class and review the textbook, and then do your tests. And that's pretty much how most of my classes have gone, especially my STEM classes. And that puts a lot of stress on I mean, the kids, the students outside of class, because you've got to allocate so much of your time to learning essentially the whole curriculum by yourself without really the help of your teacher. <laughs> and, um, and I know the teachers are overworked, but the way they've set up this curriculum is, is not, it's not beneficial to your mental health and your stress management. It, it adds so much more on your plate. And, and I think that the third reason that could really help people is just communicate like the communities out on campus doing like just groups and just like having activities to do because ever since we've come back from COVID, a lot of the big things that had happened and big traditions that had happened on campus have been canceled. Like, you know, like Fall Fest and stuff like this where people really get to meet like minds like themselves and join organizations and just meet people because I feel that a lot of people um, that I know gets kind of stuck in the rut and they kind of don't really get to meet people and that's really the root of where their loneliness or their this feeling of loneliness starts okay and you're speaking not just for yourself you think you're speaking for i if you had to guess i'd probably be speaking for me and i mean at least like 10 percent of the population i mean a couple hundred of my friends okay i mean 100 percent. okay and um okay I mean, obviously, I don't know 25,000 kids on this campus, but right. I would like to say I, I, I've t like communicated and interacted with a good amount of kids and talked to them long enough to where I know that where they're coming from and how they're feeling okay. because, I, I mean, I want to be there for everybody because I know that there's a lot of things that won't be there for them. Okay. And whether that be, you know, you know the mental outreach resources on campus or their professors or... I mean, they're friends, and some people don't really have that close a friend that they can talk to, and, and through my experience, I've talked to some people where they've talked to their friends and they've just pushed them away. They've been like, I can't help you, I don't know how to do this. Which is, there's two sides to it where you're just being a terrible friend, but also everyone's going through something like this. There's a lot of people that are going through like this stress and overwhelm where you kind of gotta work on yourself before you can help your friends, and which is understandable, which is why we should have these, you know, well-funded, you know, mental outreach organizations. Because for me personally, I already have to deal with so much stress of these classes, and trying to, essentially, in the most like extreme way, having like the mental wellness of other persons on my minds, you know, and helping them. It's a lot for one student, and sure. it's a lot for some people. Sure. And I am a good friend to people, but sometimes you need ex you need professional help i mean sure. it's it's not sometimes this isn't something just solved in a couple hours or a five minute talk sure this is stuff that's got to be worked out is your what's the name of the group you're a member of uh mentality you think mentality helps more than the caps program currently? um 
Well, right now we're not we're not huge on campus. I mean, there's a couple of people we have in our organization, and we are working on, you know, getting a better website and rebranding and outreaching to the campus. And essentially, the majority of our work is done through like social media. And so, if anyone's got a problem, they contact me, or they contact us through the Mentality page. Okay. Um, you know that you can give out that if you like. Yeah, it's uh, it's an Instagram. It's men dot uh, all lowercase and um, men's dot men m e n dot tality t a l i t e y. Okay. And cool. um, and I think that if we get the word out there we could help a lot of students because obviously UNC admins not doing much to help us and you guys aren't even therapists obviously no we're just students we're wow. all students and you're helping each other better than a oh, professional yeah. group 100 now the caps is is a licensed therapist is that correct i believe so yes okay and essentially i mean i'd known people that had gone through things and they had like t uh, tried to schedule appointments with CAPS and they had met with them, you know, two or three times, but essentially apart from that, there's not much else they do to help you. I mean, you can meet with them like two or three times and then they essentially tell you to get better professional help elsewhere off campus and additional resources that... Which aren't covered under your health plan, no, is that correct? Not at all. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's surprising. What does CAPS stand for again? Uh, it is... What is, I honestly I forgot. That's all right. It's okay. um, but it's it's like clinical and psychological studies or something like that. Sure. Okay. But um, it's essentially just our mental wellness out like our mental wellness and pretty much our therapist for students. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. But, well, Ian, it's uh, you've given such a great insight into the what what's going on on campus that most people have never heard of yeah uh, it's really it's, appreciate it you've opened up to me and you're and when when this is seen this is going to shed light on what's really going on behind the scenes that uh that um they can't be the administration has not released do you feel if they did release not specifics but what contributed either to the one of the some of the factors that they found that contributed to these these folks or i've asked another student do you think if they released a survey over five or ten years in uh, general what things might have contributed do you think that would be helpful as well along with what you're saying is uh contributing do you think yeah. that would be helpful i think it would be helpful but i think it's very unlikely that they would do anything like that and that's because <laughs> because they've done little to address the problem and which the problem is there is a a like a, a huge mental crisis like mental health crisis on campus and if they like they haven't really done anything to acknowledge what's deteriorating the mental health status of their students okay and there it's it's kind of an unspoken thing on campus because when these events had occurred and these people had taken their life on campus you could just feel it in the air for the next couple of days on campus that everyone just had this certain attitude about them. It was just like this very like solemn, like just kind of sad tone everywhere on campus. Yeah. And like the admin really hadn't done anything except sent out two emails. And ever since then, it's kind of been in the students' hands. I mean, you go down to the pit, there's a memorial set up for all the, the people that have taken their lives and there's writings and papers and of things that just just tell you that you're not alone and you are loved and okay. you go around to greek life they have all got banners on their houses that say you're loved and they have the suicide prevention hotline written on them and it's really the 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 thing that has helped this mental health crisis on campus has really just been put in the students hands and not really unc administration we've really kind of taken it together and come together as a community because we know unc admin hasn't done anything and probably will not because it is very unlikely that they would release a poll of what is hurting and hindering us in our academic, you know, pilgrimage. You know? Okay. Very good. And if you had to guess, let's say other schools in the um, in the area, I, obviously you don't know them, but you're, if you had to guess, if you talk to other students, would you say this is not just a UNC issue? It's uh, you think it's uh, U.S. wide and maybe worldwide? If you had to guess, or I know you can't speak to other schools. If but... I had to guess, honestly, no. 
honestly no because I had talked to obviously I I had helped a couple of people out with their mental health issues at a community college I where I went in Wilmington uh -huh. um, throughout high school Wilmington um, North Carolina obviously okay. yep. yeah and um, so there was some mental health things but that really d dealt with you know other things besides the academics and resources on campus but I think with through my experience and the people I've talked to it's it's kind of a UNC thing and and I'm sure there is a mental health crisis on other campuses around the country but not to the gravity of where five students have taken their lives in one semester and in it's not semester. even halfway through over okay yeah I have not heard that so in one yeah. semester five students have taken it mm -hmm. do you know how many have attempted uh, I do not know okay and I don't think they would give information about that. Out. Okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Ian, for all your insights into this issue. I think this is going to be, um, if enough people see it, I think it's going to be, hopefully, make huge changes in... I hope it does. I hope it brings, it sheds light to some, some students to ha that are going through similar things like this that, I mean, you are not alone, and I know this is hard, and but we will all get through this together because you are loved, and... I love every human on this campus, and if anything, if anyone ever, ever has to deal with anything like this, I, I can't stand the pain of losing any other student here. Okay. Because I feel like every student here is a part of my family. That's a uh, fantastic sentiment to leave uh, the viewers with. Uh, I know that people who are going to watch this are going to really appreciate it.